In our last lecture, we were talking about the JKR model. <coughs> we have yes, seen the uh, yeah we have seen the Hirsch equation. So as I said, in Hirsch theory, um, we we try to find out the contact area. So as it deforms, there is some contact area uh, formation here. <coughs> so Hirsch theory gives the contact area, but in Hirsch theory, we do not consider the forces that are acting between these two materials, solid A and solid B. And we know that almost every material will attract each other. There will be some attractive force between the materials. <coughs> so Hirsch actually conducted his experiments using uh, uh, two glass spheres. So he had two glass spheres and then he tried to um, prove his theory using this glass sphere. So he uh, applied some load and then measured the contact area using the microscope. <coughs> so it was not very, very precise. And also the two surfaces were uh, hard, hard materials. So normally glass is quite hard compared to some soft materials like elastomers. So, so in his theory, he could prove that his analysis was correct. But later on, when people conducted some tests using some softer material like a rubber, for example, if one is rubber, other can be uh, glass or hard, hard material. So in that case, people found that the contact area was not what was predicted by Hirsch theory. So therefore, there was some need to understand this better and try to model this part. So that is what the JKR model gives, Johnson, Kendall, Roberts. So here you see the uh, schematic of two spheres in contact. <coughs> and as the deformation takes place, um, elastically, some contact area is built up, but contact area will be more because there is some adhesive interaction. That means they are pulling themselves together. So one is the applied load uh, P and plus the adhesive force. So both are acting and because of this, the contact area will basically increase. <coughs> so um, two surfaces attract each other and that leads to friction. So I wanted to show you one experiment. So I've got this uh, ruler which is made of plastic, uh, some plastic, I don't know exactly. And uh, this is eraser. So if I just keep it lightly here and then try to um, make it incline a little bit. Uh, can you switch off your um, microphone? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if I tilt it like this, so you can see that at some point it starts sliding. Okay, so that there is some friction and we have seen that uh, the angle theta, tan theta gives the mu, mu value. Now, if I increase the addition just simply by just pressing them together. So by pressing what I'm doing is I'm increasing the contact area. And because this is flexible, this is elastomer, it will deform and it will make good contact. And it also depends on temperature. Today is a little cold, so it may not adhere so much. So now I'm trying to tilt it more and more. Obviously, it is now more than the previous, right? So, so now you can see that there is adhesion. The adhesive force is much stronger. So this is what happens when we slide, uh, when we make two surfaces in contact and one of the surfaces is um, soft. <coughs> so it is this much. Now it is, it fell down. In fact, if it was warm, for example, in summer, if I do the same experiment, I can even rotate this and it can 
the adhesive force will be so strong that it will it will be more than the gravity force so even now you can see to some extent it is sticking because I, I, I'm touching it so it just gets warm so there is a temperature effect as well so, so this is the adhesive force which we can see very clearly in the case of elastomers but if there are two hard materials hard surfaces uh, for example steel on steel we don't experience that but the adhesive interaction is always there and in fact the the friction force is a result of adhesive interaction there are many other actions but adhesive interaction is also one important one so the two things we uh, i was defining uh, last time one was work of adhesion so we generally write one two that means two solids one solid one solid two sometimes also write as wab and later in some of the slides it is also written as gab so work of addition is basically the energy expanded or spent in separating a unit area two two solids here solid one solid two and this area is unit and if we separate them to uh, apart and bring them to infinity and whole process is being done in vacuum then the amount of work that we do is the work of addition okay so since two solids always attract each other so there will be always a positive work to be done okay uh, to remove them so by doing this work we are adding we are doing some positive work so this value should be positive but if you imagine reverse of it let's say two uh, unit surfaces are there s1 and s2 <clears throat> and we bring them together okay so that they become one they become interface so in that case also the work will be same because this definition is for reversible but this work will be negative that means it's not the work we are doing the actually the system itself is doing its work so this is how we understand work of addition so it's very important and we use a b or one two to represent the two surfaces surface one and two if both surfaces are same both solids are same in that case we also write w one one so this is also work of addition but here in this case we call it work of cohesion because cohesion means uh, same materials coming together another concept to understand is about surface energy so surface energy is the free energy change when the surface area of a medium is increased by unit area so <coughs> if this is the surface area of this uh, solid and if we increase by unit area so how much surface energy has been increased that is known as the surface energy so surface energy per unit area is the surface energy and last time uh, i explained about the surface energy the cause of surface energy is because the atoms molecules are here <coughs> they are all have some in interatomic interaction but the ones which are at the top surface do not have any interaction <clears throat> so therefore there is a, some free energy which is at the surface and for liquid it is the same thing but we call it surface tension so because of this effect the liquids are under tension which is known as surface tension Generally for uh, surface energy, we write the symbol gamma. So if I write gamma S, then this is the surface energy of the solid. But we should always know that surface energy is always about the interface. And here the interface is air. So this is interface between solid and air. So we should write strictly, we should write gamma S A, but normally we also write gamma S only just ignoring A but air is always there so here um, if we say this is the unit uh, work of addition is 
separating unit um, surface from together to separating them apart. So if we assume that it is only a half of the surface, half of the unit surface, then after separation they become one, right? So let's say solid one and solid two and this intersection area is half not unit half then when we separate them so half is here solid one and half is here solid two so half and half it becomes unit unit means this is uh, um, same as gamma s okay so gamma s is actually half of uh, w11 i will write w11 here because this is a cohesion same material so this is the relation between work of adhesion and the surface energy surface energy is half of the work of adhesion and uh, how we can prove is uh, assuming that this is half surface so half this side and half this side so we made a full one unit surface and the definition of surface energy is the energy increase in the uh, free energy surface free energy when unit surface is formed so that is this one and but the work of addition that we have done is only half of w11 so this is the relation so these are the important uh, definitions we should understand when we are talking about surface forces how surface forces interact so the total energy of a contact of a sphere on a flat surface is the sum of reduction in surface energy due to real contact by elastic deformation and the strain energy stored. So some surface energy change is happening and some energy, uh, elastic energy is being stored. So these are the two things that is happening and we write as total. Okay. So if we write in terms of change, change in the total energy with change in the uh, contact radius then we can write this and this and if the whole system is in equilibrium it should be zero so this is how the equation is formulated here um, by jkr uh, so in his paper you you can read this paper jkr's paper 1971 so this this was the paper where they proposed this theory so this theory predicts a finite contact area when two surfaces are brought together but with no external force. So even if there is no external force and two surfaces are brought together, there will be some definite um, contact area here. So, so this is different from Hertz theory which says that there will be no contact area if there is no force acting. So JKR uh, analysis actually finally gives this equation. So we will not go through the whole derivation of equation. So finally this is the equation where A is the contact radius. So AQ is equal to 3R. R is the radius which is given by this equation. So if two surfaces are R1 has R1 and R2 as curvature then we can write R. If one of the surface is flat then one of the R will be infinity so this will change. So 3R over 4 E star, E star is given by this. L is the load, the normal load and work of addition here between the two surfaces. Again work of addition, load is here, work of addition and R and R. So this is the equation that is used uh, and was given by JKR. So if we assume that they are two same materials, then we can write WAB as 2 gamma S. And here also we, we say gamma S. So here 6 becomes 12 and 3 becomes 6. So this equation we should, uh, we don't have to remember it, but we have to understand what it means what are these things so l is the normal load that is applied here also l and gamma s is the surface energy so that means this model tells us that 
the contact radius will be affected by the normal load as well as the surface energy. So basically if we look at sphere plane surface because of Hertz contact Hertz uh, theory there will be some contact area but because of the addition the contact area will basically increase and when we do the pull off that means when we separate them apart then the <coughs> surfaces will make some sort of lip here because of the addition because this is soft material and this is hard material so this soft material will form a kind of final contact area before it separates so when it separates it will separate like a snap it will snap out of the contact but there will be some final contact area here <coughs> so this is the mechanism of adhesion and debonding or dehesion in the same paper by JKR they have plotted this graph where this is load in gram and this is contact area or diameter contact diameter so this is contact diameter and so gram one two three four and here we have got one two three so this was actually multiplied by 15 just to make it little bit larger so in this case for so this is the load and this is a contact diameter <coughs> so for the Hergian contact um, Hergian model it it gives this kind of graph it will continue to increase to some extent so that means at zero load the contact diameter is also zero but using the JKR model for these kind of materials we found that so at zero load this is not zero the contact diameter is not zero uh, let's call it A naught this is A naught here so that means in order to make it zero you have to apply negative force so this is minus one minus two <coughs> so some negative force is, has to be applied that means we have to uh, apply tension okay to remove it's it's like uh, here there is a lip formation here so so normally you have to apply some force here and then it will back to zero so this is the force of addition the maximum force of addition okay and this is the contact and diameter here uh, if I represent A as a radius then it is two times at zero load so now if we try to see how this equation will change when the load is zero <coughs> so what will be the contact area so can you do a simple analysis um, uh, substitute L as 0 this L also 0 and then let's say what we get A is how much sir uh, 3R by 4 E star um, yes it into, will remain there in, into, L, uh, into 12 pi R Y S ok so finally you will get 9, R 9 pi r square and uh, gamma gamma s divided by e star yes. and whole to the power 1 over 3 uh, yes I am I'm taking this a so whole to the power 1 over 3 or if you say a q then <coughs> so here I should write a as a naught that means this is the contact radius uh, for zero load so this is how we can get we can convert this equation into this form okay 
So if I remove this one here, so here I say 1 over 3. So this is one thing that uh, we should understand. <clears throat> Another important thing to understand about JKR model is that JKR model assumes that the surfaces are extremely smooth. So there is no problem of asperities. But since asperities are always there, so but if we use a soft material, then that is not a problem because soft material will deform, elastically deformed. Yeah, so if this is a very, very soft material like rubber, then this rubber will deform and it will take the shape of the hard surface. So therefore, contact will be very good. So in this case, we do not have to worry about surface roughness. But this equation which is developed assumes that surfaces are extremely smooth. So, so now uh, we know that A0 for zero load, zero applied load is, so this is purely because of the surface energy here. <clears throat> Gamma S we are using, uh, assuming that both materials are same. Here we have got WAB, but here we have used WS, okay. uh, sorry, Gamma S. Now another thing is during the debonding, just now we were talking about when we are separating them apart. So we are applying negative load, right? So <clears throat> how to use this equation? Okay, uh, another important thing is about how this equation will become Hirsch equation. So under what situation this equation should become Hirsch equation? Sir, uh, assuming that deformation is only up to elastic limit. Okay, deformation is only, yeah, here we are all talking about elastic limit. We are not exceeding elastic limit to plasticity. But under what situation this equation will become the Hergen equation that we have seen before? So this will become when we do not consider the adhesive interaction, right? Which means that the... Gamma S equals yeah. to zero. Yes, gamma S, uh, we make it zero. Here also we make it zero, okay? So if yeah. you make them, them zero, then what do you get? A is equal to, so this will remain there, three R over four E star and... Into L. L because they will all three becomes zero, yeah. and this is to the power one over three, right? Yes. So this is Hergen equation. So this is same. So now we can see that this equation uh, reduces to Hergen equation when gamma s is zero. Okay. And Okay, the next thing that we, we should understand about this model is just now we were talking about this debonding when we are pulling them apart. So pulling them apart will come to some extent and then we have to apply negative force because there is an addition. So negative force means this L is going to be negative. Okay, so during the debonding L is going to be negative but in order for this equation to be valid, this under root, this must be greater than zero. Yes, it must be positive, right? If it is negative, then whole thing becomes uh, imaginary and we cannot calculate. So this must be positive. So during the debonding, we make this equation as greater than equal to zero, right? <clears throat> So now, if you take only this inside one, okay, which is 12 pi r gamma s l plus 6 pi r gamma s 6 pi square is equal to uh, greater than 0. So this condition must be satisfied during the debonding. And if you uh, do the uh, further expansion, then you will find that L should be greater than equal to 3 pi r gamma. So under uh, 
the extreme case uh, we can say L should be equal to 3 pi r gamma okay so this is another relation that we we have is the relation between the <coughs> the adhesive force because L here is not the normal load it is actually the negative load we are applying here so which is adhesive force so this is same as F adhesion so F adhesion is equal to 3 pi r gamma so this is a very very good relation and if we still use in the form of wab then we should write is equal to 3 by 2 pi r wab if there are two different materials so therefore we have to uh, understand that there, there is an interface so then it will be written like this Sir, I think 2 has to multiply because gamma, gamma is equal to WAB by 2, right? Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So, so this is very, very important equation because now what it says is that by measuring the adhesion force of this kind of experiment, so actually we can find out the surface energy. Sir, I have question, sir. Yeah. Sir, for debonding, uh, de 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 sir. Mm -hmm. how is L is going to be negative, sir? I don't have to do uh, Because we will have to apply them some force. So, so. Sir, L is the geometry of the surface, no? No, L is the force. Here, L was. That's a load. Uh, yeah, load. Here, L was the load that we have applied when we are bringing them together right now now l is the negative force that we have to apply to separate them apart so so here l as i said is really the force of adhesion adhesive interaction this is also known as pull off force so sir that means we have to give work uh, for dehydration so that's why it's yeah negative. yeah we have to apply that force so this is sir, yeah. yes sir also one question sir one doubt hmm. sir the graph which uh, you draw besides of 2.2 yes 22, hmm. sir, for sir uh, same load we have two contact of dimension when we go uh, left side of the graph yeah so so we can come up to uh, zero load right the initially we applied load but we can come to up to zero load but the contact area was not zero in this case it was still some finite value whereas in Herzian model it came to zero but here there is a finite value so in order to make the contact area zero that means contact radius also zero we have to go into the negative and this is the negative force that we have applied okay so we have to apply negative force this way until uh, until it's then the contact area will go down and at some point it will snap out and it becomes zero. So the separation is not a continuous process. There will, at some point it will snap out and the contact area will be zero. So this is the graph that, that defines the unloading part. That means sir, it, is, it is for very short interval. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, time is not here. It is up to us how we apply load. So negative load, that means pulling, we are applying slowly, gently, and we will find. In fact, you have to apply very gently, otherwise it you, you will not experience this. So that's why this can be, this type of experiment can be done in a very sophisticated, fully controlled uh, equipment. <clears throat> Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Sir. So um, from we should from this analysis we should remember this equation. This equation how, uh, we don't have to remember how they were developed, but these are the final equations. Then we should know that when we introduce gamma s as zero, then we get the Hurd equation. When we introduce L as zero, that means no load situation, then we find out the contact radius for zero load okay 
And another important thing we found is the pull of force, equation for the pull of force. So in fact, this, this type of experiment can be done to find out the surface energy of the solids. So here basically the same thing that we have just now done, uh, Hergen equation when we introduce gamma s equal to zero that we have already done. And we know that the contact area is proportional to L2 over 3. Now another important relation we should know in this field is this one. <coughs> so work of addition WAB or if we call it W12 is equal to gamma 1 plus gamma 2 minus gamma 1 2. That means that there are two surfaces involved. So surface energy of surface 1 of solid 1, surface energy of solid 2, but minus the surface energy of the interface. Because when we are, have got two surfaces and we have separated them apart, then we formed one surface, so gamma 1, gamma 2, but also we have reduced this one. There was some interfacial energy here, gamma 1, 2. So that's why we have to write this way, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 1, 2. Here gamma 1 means air already there, interface, because surface energy is always for uh, interface, some interface has to be there. So this <coughs> equation is known as Dupre equation. This is a French word, Dupre equation. So we will use this equation also later. Uh, when we are talking about surface energy. Now, at separation, the external force experienced, ex external force experienced, or the adjacent force is given by this one. So just now we have derived this equation too. This is the equation for pull of force, uh, which was, which came out of the JKR model. But actually, for pull of force, long back, um, Bradley had already done some work. So we should not forget 1932. This JKR model came in 1971. So 1932, Bradley had already given the pull of force, so L addition as 2 pi r w12. Okay. So he had already given this equation which is also used. This equation is also used for pull of force. Okay. And uh, so if you compare it with uh, um, JKR model, so basically this constant is changed. It is 1.5 in JKR model. The rest are actually same. So equations, both equations are used, um, but for softer material actually, JKR model is more appropriate. That means one of the material is soft. Now based on these principles of surface forces and pull of force, there is a very famous instrument called surface force apparatus. This is a very, very useful machine and uh, it is quite sophisticated as well but the principles are very very simple so it uses two surfaces but two surfaces you can use in the form of sphere or sphere on a plate but in this case they use two cylinders so for example one cylinder like this and another cylinder will be on top of this one which is known as two cross cylinders. Okay, so the contact is here. So they are meeting at 90 degree. So when they meet at 90 degree, the contact point will be a circle. Okay. So, so the reason why um, this kind of cylinder is used, cylindrical form, because first of all, we have uh, understood that 
JKL model is valid for only very very smooth surfaces, right? So <clears throat> how can you get a very smooth surface in the nature? Do you know? Without, Sir, uh, yeah, without any any polishing to be done, you know, because these experiments were done long long back. Actually, this surface force apparatus was uh, invented around the same time, like. Um, 67 68 1968 something like that so so how can you get a surface which is extremely smooth so without machining uh, without any processing just in the nature sir um, mm. in the uh, in tree we see all that uh, mm. their uh, surfaces are very smooth in, in some of the tree yeah but uh, do you think they are uh, so smooth here we are talking about atomic scale smoothness i don't know sir no. okay that. so you you are from where where, where are you from sir bihar sir gaya district gaya district but if you go a little bit south in bihar uh, places called kodarma and giridi yes sir it's my nani house my nani ghar okay so um Minerals are very very uh, available there. Actually, there are mines of those. Yes, sir. Mica, sir. Mica, so mica. right? Yes. It's known for yes. Kodarma is known for mica, right? Yes, sir. In my. So mica, me kya milega? What can we get in mica? How can we get a smooth surface? Sir, uh, they, sir, they are layer by layer. So when right. we uh, remove the layer, then we get the. Smooth. Yes. So when we peel uh, one layer. What you get is atomically smooth surface because it's crystalline material, right? So, yes, sir. so that is the thing which we can use for our experiments. So that's the reason why the cylinders were used so that around the cylinder you can wrap it up, right? You can get a very thin sheet of mica, and you can wrap this around, right? In this one. Similarly, you can wrap a mica here okay around this so now what you get is two cylindrical surfaces with atomically smooth roughness so here we didn't have to do any processing what you do is just peel off the top layer and you get a very very smooth surface and very thin layer of mica is quite flexible as well so you, you can actually what they are glued actually by using some glue you can glue the mica sheet here on this one as well as on this one and then you can conduct the experiment so this is the idea so mica mica sheet which is atomically smooth so as a child did you play with mica and did you collect mica yes sir we, we in our house are also <laughs> mica yeah we have a lot of mica there i i also grew up in that similar area hajari bag and that kind of places and we used to get uh, we used to just see mica all around and we used to yes sir it. for us building houses when we uh, dig out the yeah. land we got a mica yeah so mica is so much uh, yes sir so and uh, you you play with that mica by peeling off right yes uh, it, it's just fun as a child to peel off the mica and then play with it but now you can see that what you were doing is you were creating atomically smooth surface and this mica surface has to be fresh before you conduct this kind of surface force experiment why why it should be fresh Sir, because uh, it is in, in found in the uh, 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 in the depth of uh, uh, sand, uh, depth of land. So, sir, there is no interaction with atmosphere. So that's why. No, uh, what I'm saying is, before we use the mica for this kind of experiment, the the mica sheet. For example, you have a block of mica, right? So one layer should be peeled off and then you use the fresh surface, freshly peeled. And the reason is because as soon as you peel off, the oxygen and any dirt will all attach to the surface because mica surface has got uh, high surface energy. 
so all the uh, whatever um, moisture as well h2o they will immediately attach to the surface so therefore we should peel off and quickly use it for our experiments so this is one thing okay so now in the surface force apparatus basically two cross cylinders are used at 90 degree mica sheet is used uh, for atomically smooth surface and then uh, they are attached for example they are attached to some cantilevers so so this uh, this whole thing will be attached to a cantilever and the, through the cantilever we can measure the forces so when you pull this cantilever up there will be some deflection because because of addition it will not allow the um, this part to go up while this part is going up so there will be some deflection so we measure the deflection which gives us the force the force that we need here and um, you need to have a very very precise movement and very precise force measurement so for the movement piezoelectric transducers are used and uh, for force measurement optical method is often used you can also use uh, strain gauges but optical method may be better so very very precise measurement of force very precise measurement of the displacement so if you conduct this test then actually you can um, find out uh, whether these two equations are valid or not so you can measure the force and uh, radius already you know okay so you can find out the surface energy of the surface now we are talking about mica so only mica can be tested but how can we test some other things for that what people do is they coat this mica surface with that material so let's say i want to study a polymer then i can coat this mica surface with that polymer similarly this mica surface also with that polymer and then i can do the same test and now this will give me the surface force or forces addition, addition force between these two polymers so it will be fully coated here so i can coat anything uh, i can coat metal or polymer and i can study all kinds of material using this method so this is a very very useful um, and but the the equipment is quite sophisticated in terms of how you build it okay the principles are quite simple but building is quite uh, difficult so okay so i will stop here so uh, and we will further study about more about addition and surface energy because these are very very important concepts as you um, we saw yesterday um, in Bharat's talk he was talking about the physics and for trilogy it's very important that we understand the physics and this is one part of the physics that we have to understand the surface energy the addition which is very, yes, very important